taking time out of his busy day, and we always appreciate it. Congressman Randy Hulkren joining us. Congressman, good morning to you. Hey, Riley. How you doing? I'm doing very well this morning. How's everything going with you? Pretty good. Yeah, busy days, but all good. I uh, I saw your, uh, your your tweet go out, and I, I read the release on it. Uh, bipartisan support of our national laboratories uh, has you excited, and I think we should all be. Yeah, it's you know it's a good story. There is some great things that are going on in our labs. We've got the amazing privilege of having two uh, fabulous world class uh, science laboratories in Illinois, Fermilab and Argon, doing great work. Uh, Fermilab celebrating its 50 year anniversary. Uh, it's uh, incredible, some, many of the things that it's done, but we're also looking towards the future of opportunities for new discovery, and one of the things that Fermilab is perfectly positioned to be a part of is understanding neutrinos. We've talked about this before, that are these elusive, smallest of small particles that we know very little about, and yet we know they're everywhere and a key part of what is holding matter together, and uh, so Fermilab and uh, uh, a lot of international partners have come together to put together a, an experiment that is working with this deep underground mine out in uh, the Black Hills in Leeds, South Dakota. And we'll be shooting a neutrino beam through the earth, uh, the crust of the earth and, and kind of inner uh, core of the earth there to over to, it doesn't go all the way to the core, but it's that crust area basically through solid rock uh, right out to South Dakota and be able to research neutrinos and have some uh, new understanding that we've never been able to do before. But we need to make sure we've got the equipment and can move forward on that. And so I had legislation yesterday up before the House that passed unanimously, bipartisan support, uh, and hopefully the Senate will approve that as well, uh, and uh, authorizing um, this important project and the investment that's going to need to happen. It's a couple thousand jobs that will be created in Illinois, a couple thousand out in South Dakota, uh, and then uh, really important work for literally dozens and dozens and dozens of scientists and physicists over the next years, along with uh, some advancement at Argonne with their advanced photon source, which is an amazing um, facility as well that's open to uh, other users. 6,000 users from around the world come into Argonne every single year to be able to access this uh, advanced photon source for research that couldn't be done anywhere else. And then also Oak Ridge down in Tennessee uh, does some um, really important work with, uh, it's called a spallation neutron source. And so my bill makes sure, again, that we are authorizing uh, improvements to a couple of these and starting of the work that needs to happen to have uh, the facilities in place to be able to do this research that I think, especially the stuff I was talking about with Fermilab, uh, is potential Nobel Prize type uh, research that's going to happen at, at Fermilab and out in South Dakota over the next 10 years. So a great time uh, to be in Illinois. And also, I think it's really exciting for young people, kids who are interested in STEM fields. To yeah, see the that there is an opportunity right here. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I get excited about. And, and again, that uh, a lot of things that we get frustrated with in Illinois, but we've got some uh, really cool uh, opportunities as well with our national laboratories and the fact that they are on the cutting edge of discovery that uh, no one else in the world is able to do right now, but we've got to make sure that we move forward and, and can get this done. Uh, otherwise, other, other nations are looking to move ahead of us uh, in science. So that was really the idea of my legislation was uh, continuing to make sure that uh, America leads and uh, Fermilab and Argonne in Illinois is a part of that leadership. That yeah, that uh, well, and plus, I, if I were if I were sitting in your position, which you know that would never happen, but if I were sitting in your position, I'd have to bring in some of those STEM scholars to explain to me just the stuff <laughs> you just told me about the whole neutrino <laughs> they're, thing, they're, firing it through the crust and all that. I, I I would need some high school students in there to fill me in on what this what this really is. They're amazing. Uh, yeah, I learn from them every time I'm with them. These kids are are brilliant, uh, and to me that is so encouraging that we have some really uh, wonderful young people who really want to go into science. They just want to know that there's opportunities here in America for them. You know, by definition, these are smart kids. If, if they see that there's no opportunity in science, they're going to go to law school. They're going to go into finance. And again, these aren't bad things, but we miss out on someone who could be the one, uh, you know, who, uh, who discovers a cure for cancer or discovers uh, a new depth of understanding of, of matter in life and, or, or someone who... Uh, uh, you know, again, can be that leadership team that gets us to Mars. So, uh, 
anyhow, I, I'm excited about our young people and want to make sure that we're paving the way uh, with their ideas and their help and having them involved in it uh, of saying, we want you to be uh, using every ability and skill, uh, all of your knowledge, uh, because we need you to, to, to discover and, uh, again, find some cures that could change quality of life for so many people or, or change the way that we view the future. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's a really exciting time, and, and I love talking to these uh, young people. They, they definitely uh, get me encouraged and excited. I can see where they would. We're spending some time with Congressman Randy Holcren. Of course, he proudly represents the 14th District here in Illinois. Something else uh, worthy of some excitement, uh, some bipartisan infrastructure legislation. Yeah, you know what? Uh, this is something that's so important, and we feel it in Illinois. Uh, talk about, again, a lot of the challenges we face. The reality is we are a hub uh, for the nation for transportation. We have been and we will be, but we need to make sure that we are continuing to do work to keep up really important roads and rails and bridges and airports, but also locks and dams. Uh, it is vital for our farmers, for our large manufacturers to be able to move goods uh, that are being made here but sold around the world and so uh there is some good talk uh we've got a long ways to go but at least we're starting that discussion to say we need uh improvement to our infrastructure these projects don't get safer the longer you wait if you kind of let them start crumbling we've seen horrible situations of, of bridges collapsing uh or uh roads failing or crossings failing uh and so we we really do need to have this conversation and finding ways of all levels of government federal, state, and local working together to get important regional projects done. So we're excited of, of taking some next steps there. I'm also working uh, with a colleague of mine, a Democrat from Maryland, Dutch Ruppersberger. He and I have been really committed to uh, what we call municipal finance. So it's the idea of um, local projects are the best projects. You know, if, if federal government is making all the choices, remember, you know, the stimulus a few years ago yes. of money getting thrown from Washington uh, at um, really inappropriate projects and often oftentimes not the most important things that needed to be done. Local government knows what needs to happen. Uh, they can do things much more affordably, much more transparently than federal government can do. So we want to make sure that we're continuing local efforts in repair and improvement of infrastructure. So municipal finance, municipal bonds are really important to be able to get that done. Also these things called private activity bonds, I think a better name for them is public good bonds. Uh, you know, of, of improving water systems or improving uh, hospitals and uh, education. Um, we, we saw it in another part of my district, uh, by Will County, uh, they have this intermodal transportation hub that was put in that has created literally thousands and thousands and thousands of jobs. But this was done with these private activity bonds uh, that bring great public good. So anyhow, we want to make sure that these are recognized. They were continued in the tax reform bill. Uh, but there's more work to be done of, of helping people understand um, how, do, how do we work together, making sure that we can get good projects done. And one of the things we need to learn at the federal government is it's ridiculous when we do a federal project where oftentimes it takes three, four, five times as long to get something done because of all the regulatory hoops that you have to jump through. So we've got to clean that up. We've got to be able to, again, work with local entities to get important projects done. Congressman, as always, I appreciate you taking time out of your day for us, and I look forward to the next time we can get together to chat. Thanks, Riley. Great to be with you. Have a great day. Stay you, warm. You too.